Check one, two, one, two, one, two. Just take that down there. Welcome everybody to Cornubia Park Sports Complex here in Logan as the Logan Thunder host Mackay Meteorettes in women's QBL action here presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. I'm John Guarna. Tonight I'm joined by Dan George. Dan, this is a top three battle between two of the top teams in the competition. It should be a great matchup. It sure will. I think Mackay has proven all year that they've been one of the top teams and obviously Nadine Payne missing tonight doesn't help their causes on the road against Logan have also been really impressive to start there so I'm looking forward to a really good quality game coming up shortly. Yeah Mackay is playing the second game of a back-to-back -back. last night they were down at the Gold Coast Dan and they picked up a 74-39 win just another impressive win for the Meteorettes and getting back in the winning track after dropping that tough one to Spartans. Yeah that Spartans game would have been great to see and I look forward to watching them play again later in the year. Uh, the Gold Coast match, they were probably always going to win that just based on the paper results. But, I mean, they didn't shoot the ball too well. Three of 19 from deep and only 64% of the foul line as well. So there's a lot of room for improvement from Mackay. And I think sometimes the second night of the back-to-back -back is a little bit easier to play. They had, didn't have much of a travel last night. Gold Coast to Logan obviously is not too taxing. So I'd expect them to come out and play a bit more efficiently tonight. And you've got Michaela Cox and Shavana Pelvast and all these great quality players still on the roster. You're looking forward to a really good game coming up against Logan who are going to want to defend home court. Yeah, it certainly hurts to lose a player like Nadine Payne, but Mackay has been built on their depth. Uh, they should be able to withstand that. Logan also comes in uh, with their, they're on a six game winning streak. They dropped their first game of the season versus Spartans and then they've ripped off six straight. But this is certainly going to be one of the toughest tests, if not their, the toughest test so far in the season. Logan's last game was last week in uh, the Carly Adams Foundation Charity Shield matchup with the Southwest Metro Pirates. They won that game 73-66. I spoke to Coach Can before the game, and it was a tale of two halves in that game. They were down at the half. Uh, they made some adjustments and corrected some things. Second half, they were able to pull away for the win, but they didn't shoot the ball very well. 37% from the field, only 27% from three. Uh, but they did a really good job on the glass. They had 53 rebounds, 16 of which were offensive rebounds, which led to uh, a lot of points in the paint. They had 34 points in the paint in total. And when you look at Logan's roster, they don't have that size. So a bit surprising to see they grabbed 16 offensive rebounds. And as usual, they were led in scoring by Kate Gaze in that one. 22 points, but very inefficient last week from Gaze. She was only 7 to 26 from the field. She did a lot of other things, though. She had eight rebounds and five assists. And um, Kayla Donnelly had a great game, 13 points and six assists. The, the matchups tonight should be pretty good, though. You've got Donnelly and Gaze versus Cox in the backcourt. And then up front, you got Tammy Willey going up against uh, Jackie Luna Castro for Logan and Sarah Ambrose also had a great game last week so what are the, some of the things that you expect to see from these teams tonight? Well you've touched on a couple of really good points John and I think the Sarah Ambrose the Cassie Smiths the Luna Castros those are the girls that are going to make the difference between Logan being a good team and being a great team I think we know what KK is going to give us um, but coaching wise there'll be a good matchup as well and we'll just pause for the anthem obviously in a moment here Yep we'll be back with you shortly after the anthem Excellent rendition of the Australian National Anthem there from one of the many local talents at the in the Logan area. Didn't catch her name, but great rendition, wasn't it, Dan? Oh, it's always good to hear the anthem, and especially when it's live. And well, that's not easy, getting up and singing in front of anyone, let alone a stadium full of people. So really, really good job from that young lady, and I'm sure we'll hear her again, hopefully, at some stage during the season. 
Let's talk about those matchups, though. If you're the Logan Thunder, how do you match up with Tammy Willie? They don't necessarily have the size. Do you expect to see Jackie Luna Castro go head to head with Tammy Willie? Well, I think it's got to be team defense, and uh, you would see that. I think Luna Castro will be the matchup to start the game, but you might even see a Ambrose or a Cassie Smith at times. But it's a team defense, meaning the perimeter players can't just stand off and let the Mackay guards just pick them apart and throw easy entrance passes. You need ball pressure on the perimeter. The post players need to do their work early and push Willie off her spot so she can't just walk into the post and get easy touches. So I think there's a lot to do with how to defend a player when you've got a size advantage like that. If they just stand behind her and let them make easy post passes, there's going to be foul trouble and buckets all both on a lot of possessions, which is not going to help Logan at all. Yeah, and then for Logan, how do you match up with Cox, with Palvast, with Tammy Willie? Jill, we didn't even mention Jillian Horton, who's one of the top assists. Um, I think she's second in assists, sorry, fifth in assists. She's averaging five assists a game, but she can explode also. So what do you do, Lo Logan-wise, Logan to try and slow down Mackay? And, and if you're Mackay, do you try and run with them because you have you have the horses? Well, it'll be good to see how the coaches adjust as the game goes on, but I would almost just challenge my girls and say, you know, Kate Gaze, you're a professional player, and I don't hide from the fact she's one of my favorite players in the league, and I love watching her play, but... I would almost say you got Michaela Cox, you got Palvis, you got these girls that are elite as well. Challenge her and let her play one on one. Let, there's no need to double, there's no need to trap. Um, it's the same with Michaela, same with Cassie Smith. I would just challenge them. And if you need to make adjustments as a team and maybe trap sometimes later on during the game, you can do that. But to start with, I'd just try and challenge my players and tap into that competitive spirit and see if we can just guard everyone one out, which obviously helps everyone else um, stay on their man. There's less help defense, it's easier. Uh, for them to get the other way and transition to the offensive end. So that's how I would guard to start with, but we'll see uh, what happens as the game unfolds. Yeah, it's going to be a great matchup. Logan, very successful, and I think they look their best when they're playing transition basketball. They're going to try and pressure Makai. They're going to try and force turnovers and get some easy buckets. I think if I'm Makai, i got to make sure they don't get caught up in that game and play my game. Makai, we saw against um, Southwest, very good in the half court as well. So... Uh, I, I think it's going to be whoever can will themselves and play their style or will their style onto the opposition is going to have, have a good say in this one. Dan, you want to make a quick prediction before we tip? Well, the prediction is going to be a great game and <laughs> it's going to be competitive and I'm looking forward to watching. But I will pick Logan just just because Nadine Payne's not here and because they're at home. I yeah. think those two factors will get them over the top. Yeah, and uh, Nadine Payne, of course, not here tonight because she's representing Australia overseas in the World 3-on-3 -three -three Championship. So I uh, wish Nadine Payne and, uh, and the Australian team the best of luck. Uh, do do the country proud. Wear that green and gold with, with pride. Uh, sorry we can't see you, but it's going to be a great matchup nonetheless. As we get set to tip, it's up. And it's won by Logan. So Logan will have the first opportunity to put some points on the board. You see uh, switching man-to-man -man defense here from Makai early. Luna Castro on the baseline is money. She can hit that. Makai gives that to her all night. She's going to have a huge one. And we see Cox and Gaze matching up defensively, too. That's a great matchup. Sure is. I was about to say that. I think that's going to be worth looking all night long at those two go head-to-head. -to -head. Two really good players on both ends just matching up on each other. So... Looking forward to watching that. Yeah, Houghton unable to convert on the other end. So Logan again looking ahead to their lead. Gaze off the screen, misses the jumper. Palvast leaking out. Good catch and finish there from Shavanna Palvast. Great look by Michaela Cox. We were talking pregame, John, about Palvast and the energy and the talent she brings to the floor. But, I mean, that's a difficult catch and finish. Just a really quality athletic play. Yeah, then Logan... Got beat down the floor there. They're going to have to do a better job in transition defense. Donnelly drains the long two. Kai looks to be wanting to go at, at a fast pace here. Cox tied up. Referee is going to get Kate Gaze, though, for the foul. So Michaela Cox is going to go to the line for a couple free throw attempts. She's a perfect 12 of 12 from the free throw line so far this season. Oh, well, let's see, John, if put the jinx on as we've been known to do we've known to do in the past <laughs> this season it's Hopefully not just not. us it's it's a it's, it's an international curse known as the broadcasters jinx she hit the first though so let's see if she could convert the second and she does 
Mikael Cox having a great season. 14.6 points a game, four rebounds, just under four assists. Just a great, great talent. I love, I enjoy, I really enjoy watching her play. Ambrose catch and shoot is short. Good offensive rebound though by Cassie Smith. Out to Gaze, open for three, it's off. Couple good looks though for Logan. Kai's gonna wanna tighten things up a little bit on the defensive end. Triple team, Donnelly comes up with the steal. Then they're gonna get Willie for a reach and foul. <laughs> she, she's got the look of surprise on her face. Team fouls are one apiece. I think that answers your question a little bit, John, from pregame about how do you guard Tammy Willie with the size advantage she's got. I think on the catch, they're gonna bring two or three players as we see Logan turn it over. And I think one of the keys to every game, every week is who can look after the ball the best? So those sort of cheap turnovers are gonna drive any coach crazy. Yeah, that was uh, again, one of the things we spoke to Coach Can about initially on uh, in, in that early going was last week they turned the ball over way too much. They can't turn that over, he's gotta take care of the pill. Here's another turnover, so back to back turnovers, one apiece. Cox throws up the floor, that's way off. She recovers though. Palvas gonna step into a wing three, that's too strong. Tipped around and Donnelly comes down with it. So, teams both struggling a bit to take care of the pill and finish. Good pass though from Donnelly to Luna Castro who finishes the reverse layup. Good recovery there by Cox. Thought it was a travel or a double dribble. You see Cassie Smith asking the referees for it. Foul call though is gonna go against Sarah Ambrose, her first. Out and driving baseline can finish. We're not at that six. Seven to go in the first quarter. Good lead pass, Gaze pulling it down. Looking inside, it's knocked back. She recovers though and banks it home. I like that from Gaze though, looking to create for a teammate. Well, you touched earlier on her shooting percentages, but still, you'll expect her as the year goes on to get a bit more efficient. Second leading scorer in the league. And I think for this Logan team, the more aggressive that she can play, I think the better it is for everybody else. So I agree, John, good to see her looking to get her shots and equally looking to get everyone else involved as well. And good job defensively by Ambrose. She got the sw she got the switch on Tammy Willie. That's a tough matchup for Ambrose, but she does a really good job defensively there, forcing Willie into a tough shot. Deep three from Gaze is short. Ambrose though chases down the O board. She had about five offensive rebounds last week as well. Very similar, just out hustling people and out wanting it. But Ambrose gets called for the offensive foul. That's gonna be her second personal. Coach Can doesn't like the call. Timeout taken on the floor though, Thunder, so we'll take one as well. It's an 8-6 lead for Logan over Mackay with six minutes to go in the first quarter on your QBO game presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. All right, back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Complex. 8-6 lead for Logan over Makai early. Coach Tess taking the timeout. Pretty good timeout, wasn't happy with the way the, the troops were playing. I think he said the word rebound about 20 times. That's uh, <laughs> not that many, but it was an obvious message to his team that he's not pleased with their ability to control the defensive glass. 
Lily step back jumper is good. That's a tough shot too. Nice move. Yeah, I love using the, using the body to create the space and then fading away. It's not easy. Donnelly misses. Long rebounds tipped out. <laughs> Coach Tesk looks like he's about to blow up. Well, it's never good. The first possession after a timeout, which was called distress rebounding, you give up another offensive board. Donnelly, wild rebound, miss. Matuga got the rebound, but Donnelly's layup attempt hit nothing, so it's a shot clock violation. Good defense there from Makai. We're not at that eight. It's about 5.15 to go in the first quarter. Good drive, and Palvast gets it. Gets to the rim to lay it in. 10 8 the lead now for Makai. Another offensive foul called there on a screen. No basket there. That foul is going to go on Michaela Donnelly. So that's the second offensive foul we've seen setting a, setting a pick for Logan on the offensive end. Sure is. And we've discussed a little bit over the last few minutes about how well they're playing and. I think when you can turn the ball over, it takes away offensive opportunities to get shots and also to get offensive rebounds. And I mean, this Mackay team, such a good team, you just don't want to let them hang around. And those sort of turnovers are going to come back to bite them if they can't clean them up potentially. Wild rebound, layup attempt is missed. Goes out of bounds off the hands of Tammy Willie. A lot of contact. I don't mind. The referee's letting them play here. A lot of contact inside. Referees let that one go. 10-8 the lead here for Mackay. About 4.30 to go. Matuga in for Sarah Ambrose. Luna Castro hands off for Smith. It's eight seconds to go on the shot clock. Donnelly now top of the key three is strong. And a good rebound there for Mackay. Disseldorf with the rebound, sets the screen now for Cox, gets in the paint, fadeaway jumper, in and out, and Matuga comes down with it. Two on one, great pass, Cassie Smith finishes. How good is that? Ula Matuga gonna also represent Australia at the under 17 three on three tournament. That's a perfect player for a three on three tournament as Houghton hits the three, but Matuga can guard every position on the floor, can pass, shoot, dribble, do a bit of everything. Well, how excited are they anyway? Uh, representing Australia is always something amazing and very memorable, but with three and three coming to the Olympic Games, those girls and guys who are playing in these three and three tournaments must just have that added element of excitement and motivation, just what the future years might bring. But you're right, Matuga is just highly skilled and can shoot the rock, good defender, shows her ability to pass, can lead the break, does a bit of everything. And we've spoken before this year and previously about the junior development they do here at Logan and they just continue to put out quality young players with Goodchild, another one subbing in who's having a really good season as well so far. Yeah, Mila Goodchild already won a gold medal at the Under-17 World Championship. She's just been recently selected to play for the Australian Under-17 team again at the Oceania Championships. Matuga is blocked from behind by Tammy Willey. And here comes Palvast. Good look inside, reverse layup though, no good. Kelsey McDermott missed. Now Logan going down the other end with Matuga on the block against Palvast. Layup is good. Last move, huh? Great move and finishing through the Palvast contest. Now Palvast has it, gets the screen, doesn't use it. Stop and pop from Palvast, it's too strong. Luna Castro comes down with it. Good pass there from Gaze to Luna Castro. Foul called, who are they gonna give that one to? If they give it to Willie, which they do, it's gonna be her second personal as well. Gonna send Jackie Luna Castro to the free throw line on the season. Luna Castro shooting at an 80% clip. Makai's got three team fouls, Logan with four. 2.28 to go here in the first quarter.
World tied up at 13 now. Makai looking to push the pace. Turn over there from Cox. And you gotta credit Logan there a bit on the made free throw, a bit of pressure. Kind of dis discombobulated Michaela Cox there. Discombobulated, I think that means it just put under pressure and sped her up, I think, but I agree, discombobulated is exactly what happened. And Logan returned the favor. It's for two quality teams, they're just really getting a, well, taking a while to feel each other out, aren't they? A few turnovers and a little bit scrappy so far, but. And another foul on the other end, that's Mila Goodchild picking up the foul on Michaela Cox. Cox just got her feet in the paint, and once you get in there, she wasn't gonna be denied getting to the rim. She's still perfect from the free throw line tonight. And on the season, Kayla Cox. Two points to the lead here for Makai now. 15-13, two minutes to go in the first quarter. Luna Castro, turnaround jumper is good. She's been really impressive so far this season, Jackie Luna Castro, a great addition to the Logan Thunder and the QBL. And she sure has, and no hesitation at all on that last jump shot. Cox from three is she off. She usually rocks the bright, fluoro-colored, very thick headband, but we're not seeing it tonight, but it's not affecting her game. Good child, throws up a wild one, it's off. And here comes Makai, they've got numbers, good pass inside, Palvas to Zelenka. And a nice left-handed finish from Zelenka. That was a great pass, too, from Palvis. Through the traffic. 17-15 the lead here. Makai over Logan. Kurosome in. Pull-up jumper is too strong. And we're off and running again. McDermott pushing it up court. Zelenka gets it on the block. She wants a clear out. Go. Luna Castro one-on-one, -on -one. baseline, reverse layup is off. And here again, Logan has numbers, four on three. Donnelly's gonna step into a wing three that's too strong. Palvas putting it on the deck. Good ball movement here, Zelenka has it now, top of the key. Great spin move, she's fouled there by Luna Castro. Good creativity there by Jackie Zelenka. Gonna go to line for a couple shots. It was pretty good defense too, but you could see Zelenka really liked that matchup. There was a couple options to give it up, but when I mean, she called for the ISO and made a really nice quick move and has put enough pressure on the, on the defense and on the officials that she got herself rewarded with two foul shots. Donnelly gonna get a breather. Cassie Smith gonna check back in. And uh, McDermott just checked out for Mackay. Checking in for the first time tonight, Sarah Storstraw. We saw her versus uh, Southwest, and we were really impressed by Storshaw. We sure were, and thank you to our Nothing But That Media supporters. We know that she's been at college in the States and a very promising young player for Mackay. Luna Castro, no look, corner three is up and off. Tipped around, Matuga saves it for Logan, but she stepped out of bounds. Thought she saved it, but went out of bounds, so McCoy with an opportunity, 15 seconds to go, no shot clock, no game clock. Excuse me, no difference. McCoy's gonna run, it's like a horn set here for Cox with eight seconds to go on the game clock. It's a pelvis shot, there you go. Palvas gets it going to the basket, layup is good. Good finish there by Palvas. Gonna send McCoy into the quarter time break, up six, 21-15. That's just a great read. Nice set there from Makai to finish off the quarter. Great offense, absolutely. They knew exactly who they wanted to get the shot and how they were going to get it for her, and that's a sign of a quality team. Well coached and executed really well and got the ball to Balvest, who's been really impressive so far defensively, her ability to pass and find teammates, but also score the ball. Yeah, so it is the quarter time break. We'll take one as well with Makai up six, 21-15 on your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.
All right, back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Complex. It's the quarter time break with Mackay up 21-15 over Logan. Looking at some of the team statistics, Mackay shot 38% from the field. So did Logan. 0 of 3 from deep are the Thunder, while Mackay is 1 of 3. Something that jumps out at me, though, Dan, 6 for 6 from the free throw line, only 1 of 2 for Logan. Uh, take what, what other statistics jump out at you? I see you had the same one. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's a close game, so you'd expect the stats to be fairly close as well. But I agree, Mackay being more aggressive and getting to the foul line. And for a team, as we see, another nice inside move. But for a team on the second game in two days to get points where the, the clock is stopped is going to be big for them all night long. But the other thing is Logan with six turnovers. We're on track for 20-plus for the game. It's just too many, especially when Mackay's only got a, t a couple, two of them themselves. So I think Logan have to play a bit better defense and give Mackay off the line and equally look after the ball and get themselves some more shots. Good steal there from Matuga. She was blocked on the other end by Cox. Now Kiriselme has a great spin move. She can't get it to fall, but a great move there by young Jade Kiriselme. She's going to go to line for two shots. Has the spin move to the left. Very nice. Going with the offhand. Well, another thing Mackay's done really well is that, I mean, they, especially that last play of the first quarter, we saw them run a set play for the single purpose of getting Pavis the ball, and they executed it really well. And I think they've done a slightly better job of getting their players' looks in the right spots. And, I mean, you'd like to see with Kate Gaze especially, good child, these good shooters they've got out there, maybe run some sets and get some some more open looks to make it easier for them to get quick buckets because at the moment Logan's working really hard to manufacture every point they can get. And uh, Logan looking to try and create, force some turnovers with the pressure. Good child just picked up her second personal though. As Storshaw tried to duck under the pressure. Donnelly going to check back in for Mila Goodchild. I know she's a young player and comes off the bench, but with two fouls forcing her out of the game, that's a big call for um, for Logan. I think they're going to miss her, and they need her to play well to be competitive against these top teams. And they're going to need their young guns also. They're going to be without Goodchild for a little while. They're also going to be without Matuga as well, going over to represent Australia. Both both players are going to represent Australia. So uh, Coach Ken plays his young players. He needs them. This is a great test for them tonight against Mackay. Gaze fires from three, that's in and out. Palvas comes down with it. Gaze has yet to get off track. Travel call there on Stara Storshaw. That's a turnover. Jillian Houghton gonna get set to check back in. As is Jackie Luna Castro. So Luna Castro coming in for Matuga and Houghton gonna come in for Storshaw. And I'm sure, actually, I have to double check this. I'm sure I read somewhere that Luna Castro actually is going to be playing internationally. I think she got picked for the Mexican team. As finishing it, Madison McDonald finishes through the contact and the foul. That foul was on Jackie Luna Castro. I got to have a look at that. Yeah, definitely have a look. But that would be awesome to have the QBL. And we've spoken about how good the talent is in the league. But they have so many internationals and I mean Palvis from New Zealand and Monmouth University which we've discussed last time she was on on air as well and I mean a Mexican player would be pretty awesome too to to have in our league but unlucky to pick up a second foul which forces her straight back out of the game John which is going to hurt Logan she started off really really well there's a bit of uh, a, a bit of foul trouble here for Logan they've got three players with two personals Gaze fouled there by Jillian Houghton. Yeah, that's going to be Houghton's second personal as well. I'm sure I saw it somewhere, but I can't find it online now. Matuga goes inside for Smith, who loses it, recovers, but can't finish. Now Palvest is off and running. Inside pass there. 
Spin move and layup attempt by McDonald is missed, but Makai gets the offensive rebound. Cox, three-pointer is off, and Gaze gets the D-board. She's off and running. Stop and pop for Kate Gaze. Gets it to roll home. Cuts the lead to seven for Makai, 26-19. Cox looking to go one on one with Kirisome. Good ball movement here. A pass that was stolen, but they're going to get Matuga for the personal foul. It's going to be Matuga's first personal. The third team foul on Logan. 7.28 to go here in the first half. Jay Willis going to check in. Taking a breather is Madison McDonald for Mackay. Wide open is Zelenka. She misses the layup, though. <laughs> Coach Tesk well, furious. He, um, <laughs> Luckily, Gaze missed the three-point attempt. That would have been a five-point swing there. Sure would have. And I mean, Coach Tesk is loving it, the execution, and they ran a great set and got an awesome look. And he started clapping as soon as that pass was made and could not believe it when the ball didn't go down. But good offense from Mackay and... Logan down the other end is struggling. Kate Gaze rarely misses everything, and we saw her do it there. And um, They've got to find a way to get some easy looks. 19 points with seven minutes left in the second quarter. They're going to be conscious of the fact that it's hard to score against this Mackay team. Three-pointer for Willis is too strong. Zelenka, though, grabs the offensive rebound. Gets right back in the paint. She's going to barrel through the defense. A lot of contact there. They're going to get Zelenka for the travel. Thought they were going to go for the offensive foul. Looks like Zelenka hurt her ankle or something. She's going to jog it off. Logan's got Donnelly, Ambrose, Matuga, Gaze, and Smith. There's Gaze on the baseline. Jumper is good. How tough is that? Going left, stopping and popping along the baseline. Then you're a right-handed shooter. Well, I think going left as a right-handed shooter is actually easier because the ball's just naturally in a better position to go up and shoot it. Going right and shooting with your right hand, I think, is a little bit harder, but that's not to take away from the quality of the move. But And we see it with James Legan and the men we talk about. When he gets to his left hand, it's just such a smooth shot. When he goes right, it just looks completely different. So, I mean, Kate Gay's going to her strengths, knew exactly where she wanted to get to and knocked it down. Willie, Tammy Willie just checked back in for Jackie Zelenka. And checking in for Logan, Alice Honoré. Honoré hasn't played too much this season, but Coach Can looking for some help inside. Makai doing a number of them on the glass. They're out rebounding. Low. Well, it's actually only 16 all, but see if we could find those offensive well, rebounds. Well, at quarter numbers. time, it was a plus four to Logan. So uh, for it to be 16 all pretty quickly, that means it's what's that seven to three in this quarter. So this quarter, Makai is doing a significantly better job on the glass. There's Gaze driving baseline. Good defense. But nice ball movement from Logan. Inside pass to Ambrose. She can't finish. She went in and out. Honoree, though, fighting for the rebound. She can't come up with it. I really love what Makai's doing. They're looking to get into that half-court offense as quickly as they can. As McDermott airballs a three. And then double dribble there from Jay Willis. Coach Tesk wanted her to go right back up with it. Double dribble the call, though. Twenty-eight, twenty-one, the lead. Five fifty to go here in the first half. Cassie Smith looking to make something happen. She finishes and the foul. I like that. Logan cleared it out for Smith. Let her go to work. Cassie Smith rewarded them with the bucket and a three-point play opportunity. Yeah, she's such a good player and does a bit of everything. Doesn't always look to score, but certainly very, very capable. And I think they felt they had a mismatch and went right at it. But tough finish too. Quality move from her. Yeah, Smith averaging 10 points a game so far this season. Her season high was 19 points in the season opener versus the Spartans. Smith finishes the three-point play, so it's now a four-point game here. Makai up. 28-24. Houghton's going to fire a deep three that's short. Tipped by Willie, but it went out of bounds. It's 
So a bit of defense there from Logan, forcing the outside shot from Mackay. Well, Mackay have shown their ability to get into the paint, both with passes and offense and also just penetration. So I think if you're Logan and Mackay beat you from the perimeter, you live with it. But if you can keep them out of the paint, that's definitely what you'd rather have. So I don't think they'll just continue to encourage that shot and hopefully for Mackay they can knock them down. Well, he's going to take a deep one, that short, long rebound. Gaze lets it run out of bounds. Logan very happy, like you said, to let him shoot from outside. Coach Tess doesn't like what he sees, so he's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Makai up by two, 28-26 over the Logan Thunder on your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at Cornubia Sports Complex. It's a two-point lead for Logan over Mackay. Co good time out there for Coach Tess. I think he's just probably wanting to settle the troops down. Guys, let's run offense. When we run offense, we're, do we're doing a good job. They were kind of rushing the shots on the offensive end, I thought. Well, they've been playing such quality, structured basketball. But the last couple of minutes, they have got away with it a little bit. I do feel as well, John, I agree. So, Good ball movement from Logan leads to an honorary two-pointer, and we're not at that 28. A little zone there from Makai as well. Inside to Palvez. She likes to match up with Gay. She can't finish, and Willie knocks it out of bounds. Tide's st starting to turn and favor the Thunder here, Dan. You can just feel it, can't you? The, just the game has just shifted definitely in Makai. Those looks they were getting in the first quarter and a half are just a bit harder to come by. And Alice Honoré as well, by the way. Coming and making doing, a difference. Absolutely. And she's been around for a little while. She's not a young young player, but anyone who doesn't play big minutes to stay ready and to come in and contribute like this is just a testament to how professional she approaches the game and making a, an impact here for sure. Yeah, she couldn't get the layup to fall, but she's going to go to line for her first two free throw attempts of the season. You see Palvis coming back to Coach Tess saying, can we go back to a man? I think they're having a hard time rebounding and containing out of this zone for Mackay. So we'll see if they do make the change. But give Logan credit. Honoree goes one of two. So Logan back in the lead. 29-28 now for the Thunder. Here's some zone. Here's some zone from Logan. Alves now goes inside. Willie double teamed. She can't finish, but she's fouled. Let's see who they give that one to. It's either going to be Smith. No, yeah, it went on Cassie Smith. That's going to be her second personal. Both teams in the penalty now. So fouls from here on out will send people to the free throw line. And a good job from Makai, too. Realizing they need a bucket, being patient, getting the ball into the post. Much better offense from them. Willie hits them both, so Makai retakes the lead now. It's a one-point lead for the Meteorettes. And they are back in a man-to-man. Johnny, that zone did not last long. Donnelly's jumper is too strong. Willie corrals the long rebound. Houghton looking inside. It's at the elbow now. Good ball movement. Cox going to get called for the offensive foul. Donnelly, she does that at least once or twice a game, picking up a charge call. She's probably one of the best in the on the women's side, I'd say, picking up that charge. Yeah, great, great defense. Here comes Jackie Luna Castro checking back in for Alice Honoré. Honoré giving them some great minutes here in the first half. 
Donnelly kicks it for Gaze. Gaze gonna bring it back out. There's Luna Casho, stop and pop. That's good. She has got nice. the textbook jump shot, doesn't sure she? Sure does. And you can see a lot of the post players oftentimes being pretty good at the catch and shoot, but to put it on the, on the ground like that and one or two dribbles and go into a jump shot, just quality offense. Hey, good hands there from Donnelly tipping the pass out of bounds. Cox gonna, thought about a step back. Willie going to fire a deep two. That's good. Luna Castro didn't have the hand up. Willie makes her pay. Gay's pass tipped by Tammy Willie out of bounds, so Logan will maintain possession with 14 seconds to go on the shot clock. Gay's, I thought she was going to fire there. Gets the screen though, flips one up, can't finish. Palvest has it, she's off and running. Good pump fake by Cox, she has to pick up her dribble. Ambrose and Cox fighting for it. Tipped around, Cassie Smith comes up with it. Smith with the two on one, good fake, and Smith finishes at the rim. Mm. Great job there by Cassie sure Smith. Sure was, well I think you told in juniors, in a two-on-one, you keep going until the defense stops you, and that's exactly what she did, and defense didn't commit, and she made them pay. Palvas goes right at the Logan defense. She's fouled, gonna get, get two free throws. That one's on Jackie Luna Castro. Luna Castro, that's her third personal. Let's see if Coach Ken goes back to the bench and he's, honor it. He's gonna have to. Yeah, Coach Ken, I think, taking the timeout, so we'll take one as well. It's a one-point lead here for Logan with 2.16 to go in the first half on your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at the Conubia Sports Complex with the Mackay Meteorettes trailing the Logan Thunder by one, 33-32. A Shavanna Palvest at the free throw line for two shots. Palvest on the night. This is gonna be her first free throw attempt. She's got six points so far, three rebounds and two assists. Doing a bit of everything for Mackay. Very good defender as well. Just a quality player all, all around. And I think obviously with Mackay being such a good team, having all the success they're having, Nadine Payne's a star with Palvis is right behind her, if not right next to her in terms of quality of player. Just awesome to watch her live tonight. And she goes one of two, so we're not at that 33. It's about two minutes to go. Ambrose gonna fire a jumper, that's off. There's Palvest with it now, skips it over to Houghton. Inside pass to Willie is tipped out of bounds by Kate Gaze. Good recognition there though. Willie had Gaze in the post. And we will gonna get a breather. Zelenka checks in and Shore Star Storeshaw <laughs> checks in for Houghton. I think it's a really smart sub from um, from Coach Tesco who's bewildered at the out of bounds play we just saw. His reaction on the bench was priceless. But I think you don't want Tammy really picking up a third foul, so with the tied game a minute and Minute 40 left in the half, get her out, protect her, keep her ready for the second half with three fouls still to give. A good defense there from Ambrose, forcing the tough shot from Disseldorf. Logan has an opportunity to take the lead. Gaze has it over to Smith now. Gaze flips it up, can't get it to fall. Rebound saved there by Zelenka. 
Storshaw, we saw her do a good job against the Pirates defensively. She's going to have the matchup with Gaze on the other end tonight. She steps into a long two that's too strong. Great skip pass ahead for Cassie Smith. Good look inside. Henri finishes the layup attempt. Good ball move in from Logan. Just perfect transition basketball, wasn't it? Great kick ahead pass from Gaze to Cassie Smith, who penetrated and found an open honoree who's really made a great impact here in the first half off the bench probably unexpectedly yeah has, like i said hasn't played much Storshaw inside gets the, lost on the baseline she finishes the reverse layup donnelly goes inside gaze turnaround jumpers off the back of the rim Cox comes down with it with 30 seconds to go in the first half. Palvast loses it, and Gaze comes up with it now. Ambrose running hard. Gaze going to bring it back out to hold for the final shot of the quarter. Excuse me, the half. Gaze looking for the honorary screen. She gets a double screen. Good help. Gaze spins away from it. They'll lose it on the way to the bucket. The jump ball with four seconds to go. Possession hour favors Logan. You can just feel Kate Gazer's, as Coach Kang will call a timeout, I think, to drop a play. Coach, uh, Kate Gazer's looks frustrated, and I think when you're used to scoring 25, 30 points a night, to be putting up a you know, 3 of 12, 3 of 13 half, it's going to lead to some frustration, but hopefully she can come out of the second half. If she doesn't score here, come out for the second half and get herself to the foul line and just get into the paint, get some laps, and just find ways to get herself going because... Logan need her to play well, obviously, if they're going to win tonight, I think. Yeah, Gaze, uh, 3 of 12 from the field, like you said. She's got six points. Uh, has yet to hit a three, though. She's got four rebounds, two turnovers, so not a bad night. She's a plus six so far for Logan, so it is positive when she's out there on the floor. Just can't find the shooting stroke just yet. you got to expect, though, Coach Can to draw something up for Kate Gaze coming out of this timeout with four seconds to go. Well, she'll be the focus, but then you can look for, like, an Alzheimer or a Cassie Smith slipping because Kate Gaze should draw a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the attention of the defense, definitely, but... I mean, her taking 12 shots, whether she makes three or misses 12 or makes 12, I don't think it matters, but they need her to be the focus. So I'm glad to see she's getting a lot of reps up, but um, she needs to stay aggressive. But if that shot's not falling, find other ways to influence the game and maybe get into the foul line is a good way to go. But still a very good defender, good passer, does a lot of great things, but she just looks like she's a little bit frustrated at the moment with her shots that aren't quite going in at the frequency that she would expect. Donnelly's going to inbound out to Honoré. Over to Cassie Smith, three-pointer is up and good. Cassie Smith hits the three to beat the buzzer. That looked like that secondary option. They cut Gaze off, like you said, but good ball movement hitting Henri over to Smith. Well, K Gaze came off the double, as you saw, and did take a lot of attention, as you would expect. And I mean, Cassie Smith, we talk about every time we see them play, how she has a bit of everything, knocks down a big three-point shot on the halftime break. Dan, quick thoughts on the first half before we head into the, our break. Uh, a bit scrappy to start with, probably more so than we would have thought, but two good teams. And I mean, I picked Logan at home. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with, with my tip, but it's going to be a really close, really competitive second half, so some good basketball coming up for sure. Yeah, so it is halftime here at the Cornubia Sports Complex. We'll take a break. We'll come back a few minutes before the second half of action with some halftime statistics for you as Logan goes into the break up 3, 38-35 over the Mackay Meteorites on your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.
Back with you here at Cornubia Sports Complex in Logan. At the half, it's 38-35 for the Thunder over the Meteor Edge Dan. Pretty good first half of action. Let's take a look at some statistics for Logan leading the way and leading all scorers. Cassie Smith's got 10 points. She's got the one rebound and two assists. Four or five from the field is Cassie Smith. Jackie Luna Castro with nine points and four rebounds. Kate Gaze only six points and four rebounds as well. Michaela Donnelly's got four points. Kira Somay's got two and Ula Matuga's got two. Alice Honore though, five points and a rebound. Did a pretty good job for the Logan there in the first half in a brief minutes. Well, she sure did. She made a real impact and I mean, I thought Logan really turned it around in the second quarter, and, and we commented during the broadcast about it. The game was just a bit scrappy, trying to get a feel for what they're going to do against this impressive Mackay team, but they limited their turnovers to just one in the second quarter, and I think that gave them, obviously, more possessions, which meant more looks and more offensive rebound opportunities, and it also took away Mackay's transition, which they looked really good when they are out on the break with Palavist and Michaela Cox and these girls. So I think if Logan can continue to do that, I think it'll really help them as they move forward here into the second half. Yeah, Makai was led on the score sheet by Shavanna Pavlas. She had seven points. She also had three rebounds and two assists. Jill Halton had five. Willie Zelenka and Michaela Cox each had six. Storshaw with two and McDonald with three. So pretty well-balanced attack for Makai. you got to expect a lot of the same stuff in the second half here. As Cox tries to get inside, she's fouled right away. We see Michaela Cox trying to get, a, get close to the bucket for an easy two. Well, I think they're going to shorten their rotation, you would expect, here in the second half, Mackay, and just ride Palvis, Cox, Willie, as long as they can stay out of foul trouble. And, and we talk about it all the time, John. Getting the ball in the paint is oftentimes the key to victory, and you can do that through offensive rebounds, like Logan have shown, especially tonight. But dribble and pass penetration is such an underrated part of the game. And if Michaela Cox can get her feet in the paint, she'll get herself foul shots, she'll get Willie open looks, she'll get Palvis to open looks. they really open up the whole floor for this Meteorettes team. Yeah, Michaela Cox, uh, Michaela Cox has yet to miss a free throw tonight or the season so far, so her streak still going. Three-pointer off. Donnelly loses it out of bounds, went off of Cox, though, so Logan will maintain possession. Do you think there's any part of Michaela Cox that's just considering not trying to draw a power for the rest of the season? Just so, she, just so she can finish 18 of 18, whatever she is at the moment. I mean, you, Perfect you're, record. The, you're the former professional player, not me. Would you do something like that, Dan? Great well, move there by Matuga, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm the it continues to be impressive, but well, there's no way that I would have got to 14 for 14 to start. So it was never even a consideration, but uh, I'm sure she'll continue to get to the line and continue to knock them down. Yeah, she's a great player at Cox. She's been playing at a very high level for a very long time. And she just looks incredibly fit, obviously really takes care of herself and very professional in her preparation. Just looks like she's in great shape. Great defense there from Michaela Donnelly on Cox and a great pass. Ambrose now over to Smith. Good ball movement, but Logan's got to bring it back out. Good recovery from Makai defensively. Donnelly hits the wing three. Forty-three, thirty-seven, the lead now. Willie inside against Ambrose. Her turnaround jumper is good. Her mid-range jump shot is tough, isn't it? That's the third or fourth shot she's hit like that tonight. Just showing some great touch. And it's a tough matchup for Ambrose in the paint, but did a pretty good job. Just a great hit there by Willie. Matuga stripped but recovers. Now Smith open deep two is up and good for Cassie Smith. Her hot shooting continues as well. Good move by Zelenka, goes right hand, goes to really the right nice with move. the left hand. Yeah, really nice finish. I mean, Nadine Payne's impossible to replace, just one of the best players in the league, but as we see Michaela Cox get a piece of cake, gauge a shot, but Zelenka's really helped fill the void tonight, made a number of nice moves in there. Now Willie again on the block, her jump shot is good. You Action might, starting to yeah. pick up a little bit here. Well, you might see a quick timeout from Coach Can the next minute or two, because I know the score line's still equal, pretty close, but Makai's offense is starting to look really smooth, getting some nice looks. Matuga, great pass to a cutting Ambrose. As are Logan. <laughs> yeah, both teams shooting at a very high clip to start the second half. As Zelenka beats everyone down the court, but she can't finish. Now Logan on the other end looking to push the pace. Ambrose steps into a long two. That's good as well. That's what Logan will do to you. 
They beat you down the court, they're gonna hurt you in trance. Great skip pass from Willie to Cox. Good pump fake. And the three-pointer good from Michaela Cox. That's not easy to do either. Pump fake, go to your left and pull up from three. Tough, a tough shot. Houghton fouls Donnelly on our way to the bucket. That's gonna be Houghton's third personal. Donnelly gonna go to line for a couple free throw shots. And you just saw uh, Coach Cam Tregar walking past the screen. Don't forget, after the women's game, we'll be, we will be bringing you the men's matchup between the Mackay Meteors and the Logan Thunder. Mackay just absolutely steamrolling through the competition on the men's side of the uh, QBL. Has there ever been a year in the QBL or any league in the world where there's been a person who's been potentially coach of the year and MVP of the league in the same season? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there, there has to be. Bill Russell uh, was might, a player coach. There you go. So might have been I know it. he won a few MVPs in his day. I don't know if, when he, if it was when he was coaching, though. But uh, Cam Chigar definitely up there. I mean, there's a few guys on Mackay that could be considered for MVP. Willie, that's a tough turnaround jumper. Amber she is angry, but I don't know what else she could have done on that play. Well, impossible to guard her any better than that. That's just a tip you had to the great offensive play from, from really showing a nice touch. But I think the thing that Sarah Ambrose could do differently is that you can't let Willie catch the ball there. You've got to get ball pressure on the perimeter, but Sarah Ambrose has to try and deny her and make her catch it two steps off the block. So that turnaround jump shot's from 18 feet, not 12. That's the only thing you could possibly do because Willie's showing amazing skill down there in this quarter. Donnelly inside to Gaze. Picks up her dribble, there's two on the shot clock. Donnelly forced into a long three, that's an air ball. Need to communicate a little bit better there on the offensive end. Gaze didn't recognize that the clock was running out. Donnelly with the matchup with Houghton. Now they switch out. Zelenka gonna fire the three, that's off. Matuga gets the rebound. Matuga hands it off, Ambrose pops it up. It's off though. Now Houghton puts the Jets on, passes it to Zelenka over to Willie. Good pump fake, and Willie gets to the basket to lay it in. Yeah. Great transition basketball from, from Mackay. It's a one-point lead now here for Logan. Mackay chipping away, looking for another stop on the defensive end here. Smith steps into the long two. That rolls home. That's that friendly home rim, isn't it? There you go. That always feels so good as a shooter when you see it bounce in like that, but... It's amazing how the friendly touch seems to favor the good shooters who work hard and get shots in like I know Cassie Smith has, but as we see Cubs uh, subs coming in for, for Logan. Yeah, Luna Castro checking in, as is uh, Jaden Fuiava for Ula Matuga and Sarah Ambrose. So Luna Castro playing with three fouls here. She's gonna have to be careful. She's got that matchup inside with Willie. Willie recognizes it. And she's on absolute fire here in the third quarter. Tammy Willie cuts the lead to one with that turnaround. Yeah, I think that's her fifth jump shot she's hit in the last three or four minutes as she is on fire. And you would expect them to keep going to her all night long. Luna Castro, though, answers on the other end. I don't know if we've seen her miss a jump shot tonight either. Oh, we haven't. I think she's perfect. She's a five for five from the field. But Willie going right at Luna Castro. Bodies are out of the way. Luna Castro can't do much else. She's tried to stay in front, but she can't, doesn't want to pick up that fourth personal. Luna Castro takes a few dribbles. No look to Smith. There's six on the shot clock. Smith gets the screen, going at the defense, looking inside. That was just good defense there from Makai, but they turn it over. Smith picks it up. There's Luna Castro at the free throw line to convert. Got to look at that. Luna Castro, yes, your perfect seven of seven for him from the field so far. Excuse me, six of six. Inside to Willie Turner. <laughs> My goodness, was she behind the backboard when she shot that? Uh, that she is just, on the fire. 
That was beautiful to see. Just catch, spins right into the baseline and fades away. You see Logan getting into a horn set here to try and get Kate Gaze going, I think. Donnelly puts up the floater, it's off. Good offensive rebound there by Luna Castro. Chavana Palvas gonna get called for the over the back foul. That's the second team foul on Mackay. It's gonna be Palvas uh, third personal. Excuse me, that's her first personal. I was looking at the wrong player. Good child now in for Logan. Gets it over to Fuiava. Here's Goodchild on the baseline. Layup attempt is good from Mila Goodchild. It's a nice offense there from Logan. Store shore inside for Willie. The basket won't count. Gonna give the foul though, I think, to Michaela Donnelly. Donnelly got caught in the post trying to guard Tammy Willie. That's just good recognition there by Makai also, noticing the mismatch and going right to Willie. I mean, they're looking obviously to feature Willie in the offense to start the second half, but just good recognition of the mismatch. No doubt, and she knocked the shot down, didn't count obviously with the foul happening first, but another made jump shot for Tammy Willie, and they'll go right back to her. You would expect here in a minute. Palvast going left, finishing with the right hand through the contact. It's a one-point lead now for Logan. Donnelly inside, Fuiava puts it up and in. Nice creativity there by Donnelly and a good finish by Fuiava. Another one of those young studs that Logan has here on the women's QBL program. Willie misses the long two. And there's Goodchild out and running. She's gonna step into the jump shot, which is good. That's just a savvy play for someone so young, isn't it? Sure is. When I mean, you talk about skill set and the ability to shoot the ball and all these things, but the basketball IQ is something that you can't teach, and she just shows every time we see her play that her IQ is not at a rookie level. She's elite already in that space and just great recognition, and then you add the skill to knock it down as well. I guess that's showing why she's off representing Australia and has such a big future ahead of her. Hey, Coach Task took a timeout from Akai, so we'll take one as well. The Meteorettes are trailing Logan by 5, 63-58. A new QBL game of the week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Complex. Good timeout taken there by Coach Tesk. Team turned the ball over and they're down 5, 63-58. Gaze picks up her dribble. At Luna Castro, tough turnaround jump shot. Good defense there by Miss Millie Desseldorf. And then Fuviava fouls. Shavana Palvast. Good aggressive defense there. Millie Disseldorf, though, blocked the shot of Jackie Luna Castro. Good day there on on Yeah, from great day. Palvis looks a little bit shaken up, a little bit sore maybe, but I mean, how good has Michaela Cox's defense on KK has been tonight? We saw them right from the tip, cross-matched and guarding each other each end of the floor, and I mean, KK is a great player. She could easily get hot here and go off for 10, 15 in any quarter, but so far, Michaela Cox has really done a good job to make life as hard as you can for someone who's as talented as Kate Gaze is. Well, Gaze had 12 shots in the first half. She's only attempted one so far in the, yeah. here in the third quarter. There's a minute 37 to go in the third. So Cox not only doing a great job, she's just not even allowing Kate Gaze to get a shot off here. That's right. That, that, that says a lot, because Gaze gets her shot off against anybody. 
There's the matchup on the other end, Gaze Guard and Cox. Instead it goes to Willie, she'll pop, stop and pop, and Willie continues the hot shooting, cuts the lead to three. These are not easy shots that, oh, excuse me, not um, not hard shots that that um, she's putting up. These are difficult, contested jump shots that Tammy really just keeps knocking down. I mean, she's making it look easy, but, and Kate Gay is doing a great job getting to the foul line, and I mean, all it takes is one or two shots to go down, and then all of a sudden, the shooter can catch fire, so hopefully these foul shots can get her going tonight. Yeah, I like what Gaze did there, trying to get to the rim to get herself going. She'll go to the free throw line, and it doesn't have to be a layup, doesn't have to be a jump shot. It could just be a few free throws that get a shooter going, doesn't it? I think any time you can see the ball go through the hoop, foul shot, jump shot, doesn't matter. So if she can knock down a couple of foul shots here, it'll be big for her moving forward to close this game out. So Gaze hits both of them, increases the lead to five. Checking in uh, Kelsey McDermott. She's going to give Disseldorf a bit of a breather. It's Coach Tess going to the bench, using pretty much everyone tonight so far. There's Willie. She's double teamed. Calvis has it now on the corner. Gets it over to Storshaw. Misses the layup. Offensive rebound, though. Willie misses the putback. Oh, of all the tough jump shots you've made, your, your streak of the perfect night ends on a layup. Gaze has it now. She gets to the bucket. She can't finish the layup, though. Really nice, aggressive move, though. Storshaw hits the first one. Second one is good as well. Thirty seconds to go. Excuse me, twenty seconds to go. It's about two and a half second differential between the game and shot clock. Gay is going to fire a deep three. That's off. Fuliava though out hustles and grabs the offensive rebound. Gay's again now at the free throw line. Jump shot is good from Kate Gay's. Cox kicks it ahead to Palvest. Palvest has to recognize the shot, but the clock expires. Didn't recognize that the clock was running down. And heading into the fourth quarter, it's a five-point lead for Logan. Pretty good third quarter of action there, Dan. Awesome basketball just to watch. Sometimes it's you catch yourself trying to be a commentator here, just watching the game as a fan, but just high-quality basketball from both sides. And I mean, a five-point game heading into the last quarter. What more can you ask for? It's going to be a great 10 minutes of basketball coming up. Uh, it's going to be great. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the final quarter of action here on your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at the Cornubia Sports Complex, just about to start the fourth quarter. It's the Logan Thunder 67, the Makai Meteorettes 62. Dan, taking a quick look at some statistics, what jumps out at you so far in this three quarters? Well, Mc uh, Logan, excuse me, really turned the table, I think, in that third quarter, and they've got a five-point lead to show for it, but they had zero turnovers. We spoke often about protecting the ball and looking after it to give themselves your chance to get more shots, and that's exactly what they did, no turnovers. And, um, and a plus five rebounding differential in that, in that quarter is probably the reason why they're up five at the moment. But Mackay, 16 of 17 from the foul line, just keeping themselves in it by going inside. And I mean, Kate Gaze gets a layup, which will obviously help her confidence moving into this fourth quarter. Yeah, Gaze doing a good job again, recognizing that mismatch. 
Corner three is up and off from Cox. Cassie Smith comes down with it, and then Cox is going to get called for the blocking foul. Kellen Cox didn't like the call. Coach Tess didn't like it either. Well, there wasn't a whole lot in there. Just very, very subtle touch and not much contact. But luckily, she's only got two personal fouls, so in no foul trouble, which is a good thing. Kuyava has it for Logan. Picks up her dribble, goes inside for Gaze. Now back out, Fuyava baseline jumper short. Storshaw has it for Makai now. Out and pump fakes and then brings it back down. Turnover, good child, recovers. She's fouled hard by Shavanna Palvast. Good turnover and good transition there from Logan. And a good foul too. Like not dirty, help up afterwards, but I mean, no layup, especially for a young player. Make her own the two shots at the foul line. So great defense, but Palvis made a good recovery too to not give up an easy two points. Good child's a pretty good shooter from the free throw line. Well, pretty much everywhere, but she shoots it at about an 83% clip from the charity stripe. Those are her first two attempts for the evening from Mila Goodchild. Hits the first and the second as well. It's quite a high arcing shot. The ball goes up quite high, doesn't it? Oh, it looks pure. 71-62, the lead here. It's nine now for Logan. And another steal from Goodchild. Going right at Palvast again. Goodchild finishes, and Coach Tess going to take a timeout. As Logan's starting to run away, they're up 11, 73-62 with 8.45 to go in the game. We'll take a break as well, and we'll come back with QBL action here on Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. We're back at Cornubia Sports Complex. Good timeout taken there by Coach Tesk with his team down 11. Logan was going on a bit of a run there. The biggest lead of the game so far for either team. Well, if you hadn't looked at the scoreboard all night, you'd feel like this was a close game, which it is. But Mackay, you wouldn't think it down 11. They just play really composed and quality basketball. But in the last few minutes, Logan's defense led by Goodchild's really increased. And Mackay just can't get a good shot. So give Logan all the credit in the world. And on the other end, they're converting, getting to the hoop, getting layups, getting to the foul line. Looking like a really quality outfit for Logan Thunder at the moment as Sarah Ambrose checks back into the game. Yeah, that's Luna Castro's fourth personal foul there, so Ambrose going to check in. Ambrose also, though, she's got two personal fouls. But she had more than that. Here's Houghton looking inside. Baseline jumper from Willie is off. Zelenka loses it, and Gaze comes down with it. Good child open for three. She can hit it. You can't leave her that open. They're going to say it was a long two. Well, how impressive has Good child been this quarter, defensively and now offensively as well? And she struggled a little bit in her minutes or in the first half as Houghton gets called for the double dribble. Good defense there again by Fuiava. I like what uh, Logan has done here. They've kind of put the ball in the hands of Cassie Smith. She's really run things well here for them at the point spot. Yeah, great pickup, John. And I think that's a role that she's really well suited to. And she did that for the Spartans and the Siebel for a couple of years as well. Back when I was playing a few years ago. And just one of those veteran players that can score, can pass, can guard a point guard, can guard a power forward. Um, and on cue, she turns it over. So 
Well, that was uh, Ambrose that said, "Ah, oh, sorry, that was my bad. She didn't cut. She didn't cut, go well, for the roll." She popped and didn't roll. Yeah, yeah. but but um, it just gives Logan another look as well. And if Michaela Donnelly's in foul trouble or injured or whatever happens, you can go to Cassie Smith. What a great luxury to have for Coach Cam. Zelenka with the tough turnaround over Ambrose. She's been really impressive too, Zelenka, tonight. I thought she's done a really good job offensively for Makai. Yeah, I agree. There's Smith at the free throw line. Jump shot is good. Makai can't trade baskets with Logan. They need to get some stops. And just the silly turnover there, Houghton and Palvast miscommunication. Turnover's well, really hurting Makai in this fourth quarter. Yeah, it sure is. And without an 18 paint, he just to go and get you a bucket out of nothing. I mean, I think Makai, I would think, have to say, put the ball in Michaela Cox's hands, run some, I don't know, on balls with a Palvest or a Willie, just give her like a north-south on ball at the top of the key and just let her go to work off it. But they need to be a bit more structured without a stud like Nadine who's not here. Ambrose with six on the shot clock, goes out to Goodchild, deep three is off. Matuga, though, with the offensive rebound. She gets around Willie and kicks it out to Logan, and Logan will reset. Good child with five on the shot clock, spins into the paint, leaves her feet. Smith has to get it off. She does, and it falls. Well, Cassie Smith very quietly has got up to 18 points. Seven assists also. She's doing every, a bit of everything. And one turnover, John, just like you said, doing it all. And played, as usual, great defense too. Out now Cox in the corner. Her three-pointer is up and too strong. Matuga comes down with it. She's going to settle things. Hands off to Smith. 15-point lead here for Logan. Been really impressive. They really kept. They've kept their composure, and really imposed their will on Makai. Well, a 15-point lead with five minutes left is going to be difficult for Makai to peg back. And I think if they do end up losing, when they go back and look at the box score later, it'll be the inability to control the rebound rebound count that's going to come back to haunt them and you look at Willie and some of the bigger girls they've got we spoke in the pregame about this size advantage but Logan to their credit done an awesome job rebounding the basketball tonight yeah no uh, we'll keep it here there's a timeout on the floor let's keep it here stat that jumps out at me Dan you talked about turnovers McKay now has 14 to Logan's 10 Lo the turnovers really hurt Logan in the first half and those turnovers are starting to hurt Makai here in the second half. And don't forget, Logan had six in the first quarter, so to have four turnovers from the rest of the game to this point, that ability to look after the ball, and they were down six a quarter time, so I think it just shows they've cleaned up the turnover count, they've controlled the rebound um, count as well, and not surprisingly, given those two stats, they're on top. Yeah, and points off of turnovers, Logan capitalizing. 14 turnovers for Makai has led to 20 points for, for Logan, and... Another stat that looks jumps out at me, 23 points from the bench for Logan. So Coach Ken has the, the, the ability to play five guys off the bench, and they can all come, come in and contribute. We've seen Goodchild here in the fourth quarter step up. Earlier it was Ula Matuga. We saw Kurosome come in and give him some good minutes. Honoree, I mean, this has been a pretty impressive performance so far. It's a 15-point lead with just under six minutes to go here for Logan. And they've done it with... Kate Gay is the second leading scorer in the league, having a relatively quiet game. I mean, she's got herself 12 points, and she's done a lot of other really good things, but it's not like she's gone off at 30, and they've won. They've done it with all the other players contributing and playing great team basketball. So lots of positives for Logan so far tonight. But they've got five minutes where they've got to lock in and close this game out, because this Mackay team is more than capable of coming back. Out and missed the three, though. Logan came out out of that timeout in his own. So the zone definitely is successful there for Logan. Gaze gets the screen from Ambrose. Now Ambrose has it with eight. Gaze gonna fire a really deep three that rolls in and out. Now Houghton skips it over, Cox inside to Willie. Willie turnaround jumper is off. Good hands though there by Houghton, steals it from Gaze. Cox again inside now to Willie. Skip to Palvast. Wing three is way off. They haven't been able to find their form from beyond the arc tonight, McCoy, have they? No, they haven't. It's, it's been noticeable too. They've really struggled to make an impact from out there. I think they're two of 13 on the night so far. Gay's stop and pop is good. 
It's now out to 17, the lead for Logan. And Coach Test's body language has changed as well. I think he's struggling for ideas as this Logan team just continues to roll on. Palvest looking to make something happen. Hit Zelenka with a pass, and she was fouled from behind. That foul number nine, Cassie Smith. That's going to be Smith's third personal foul. It's the second team foul for Logan. Luna Castro back in for Logan. Giving Cassie Smith a breather, as is Donnelly. There's Willie with the ball going right at Luna Castro. Her jump shot off. Ambrose with a good defensive rebound. Nice in and out pass. Donnelly's three is off, though. Palvas has it knocked out of bounds from behind by Mila Goodchild. Coach Tess going to go to the bench, checking in Madison McDonald. She's going to check in for Jackie Zelenka. Four minutes to go here. You got to expect some kind of pressure or something from Mackay. A foul called as Palvas <laughs> trying to run through the key. The foul's called on Kate Gaze. That's her third personal also. A lot of contact there though. Pelvez <laughs> just bounced off mm -hmm. of Luna did. Castro. Hit the floor hard. And she got fouled two or three times. Luckily for Logan, you can only call the first one, but yeah, she went right through the gauntlet there. <laughs> Pretty good crowd here for the Mackay Logan matchup. People still following in. The men's matchup should be a great one. Don't forget to tune in next. We'll end our stream. We'll bring it back on the Basketball Qu Queensland YouTube channel. We talk about quality of players in our league. Mackay rolls into town with Sean Bruce, Lucas Walker, Cam Tregar. Logan rock up with Mitch Young and the crew. So I mean, if I was in Logan, why wouldn't you come down here? And I mean, the Thunder have done such a great job with game night too. We see the event cinemas, gold class seating courtside again tonight. It's just a professional outfit down here and always nice to come and look at the product they're putting on the floor. It's always a good night. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of sponsor, sponsors down here. You see people up in the stands, see people up on the top deck, and here's that pressure from Mackay. Good head, good calm play there by Donnelly. There's six now on the shot clock. Donnelly skips it over to Goodchild. Corner three is up. Too strong. Willie comes down with it. Skip pass to Cox. Cox puts it on the deck and has to bring it back out. She'll fire a deep two that rattles out. Jump ball. Luna Castro got the rebound. And it's going to stay with Logan. Cassie Smith going to check back in. She's going to come in for Mila Goodchild. Coach Can doesn't want this one slipping away. He's going back to the veteran starting five. It's a 15 point lead with three minutes to go here, Dan. What does Makai need to do to cut this down? Well, I think we saw a bit of full court pressure, which is something they've got to do, but. But I'm not sure how capable they are tonight as a, as a team on the season. Definitely yes, but I'm talking about the three-point shot. I think they're, you know, two of 13, two of 14 from deep. They probably need to try and speed the game up, put some pressure on some full-court press, but they do also need to get to the foul line and get buckets while the, the clock is stopped. They need to knock down some three balls too. Uh, Luna Castro thought she had the clean block, but she got called, just got called for her fifth personal foul. Really good night from... Uh, Jackie Luna Castro, she's going to finish the night with 13 points, six rebounds. But those five fouls, unfortunately. Just a really efficient night as well, six or seven from the field. Um, you know, didn't force it, just plays her role really well for this team, doesn't she? she yeah, she's been a really great addition. And she's that kind of, I think she's that modern big, you know, they talk about it all the time, but... She can play in the post, but she can step out as well. Yeah.
Donald missed the second, so Ambrose comes down with it, kicks ahead for Matuga. About two and a half to go, 16 points the lead here for Logan, 83-67. Donnelly hands off for Gaze. Gaze gets in the paint, floater is off. Ball is tipped around and McCoy comes down with it. McDermott passed us, stolen by Ula Matuga. Good, good heads up play there by Matuga. Three pointer from Cassie Smith is good. 86-67, is that the final nail, Dan? Yeah, the game is over. I think, I think Coach Test knew that a couple of minutes ago with Palvist and Michaela Cox both subbing out. And Willis going to get set to check back in as, the, as is Disseldorf. Willie, though, finishes and gets fouled, so she'll go to line for a three-point play opportunity. McDonald hit her with the pass as she was falling down to the ground. So Jay Willis checking in. Jillian Houghton going to check out. So after the big win last night, Makai is going to pick up their second loss of the season. And Logan will be in second place outright after their win tonight with their only loss coming to the team in first place. Pretty positive yeah, signs tonight from Logan, too. Well, I mean, not only getting the win. Well, they're a little under the radar, too, aren't they? Everyone talks about the Spartans and Makai and a couple of the other northern teams and the women, but Logan just putting together a big season. And you're right, outright second. And the thing is, they've got a lot of improvement left in them as well. You see, Kate Gaze hasn't hasn't shot the ball very well tonight. I've had a couple of the girls who've come in and played less of a role than usual, but some of these bench girls, the Sarah Ambrose and the like, even Alice Horner, he's come in and played really well, and they've just shown that they're a team to contend with as the year goes on. And it's going to be, they're going to have a few issues, though, because like we said, Mila Goodchild is going to be away. She's been playing some big minutes for them. Uh, Ula Matuga is going to be away for a bit as well. So they need to pick up as many wins as they can. They're going to pick up their seventh one tonight. They're going to move to seven and one. This loss is going to drop Makai to eight and two. And it's certainly, you know, they, they definitely, Makai definitely has enough talent to win this game tonight. Logan just played a great game. But it doesn't hurt, uh, it doesn't help that you're missing arguably one or well, She's definitely one of the top players in the competition in Nadine Payne. Strip there and steal there by Ambrose. I think we, we, might, we might see another rematch between these two teams later on in the season, come finals time, Dan. Yeah, it certainly would not surprise me. They'll be right up there, both of them. And I hope so as well. Selfishly, as just a fan of the game, I'd love to see them play again. Add Nadine Payne to it, add a hot Kate Gaze to it, I and mean, that'd be a game to watch for sure. Yeah, well, let's take, let's might as well take a look at some of the statistics as there's 24 seconds to go, and it's an 88-69 lead for Logan. Leading the way in top scoring for Logan was Cassie Smith. How good was Cassie Smith tonight? 21 points, seven assists, four rebounds, only the one turnover, like we said. They had three other, or excuse me, four other players in double figures. Next up was Kate Gaze with 14. Jackie Luna Castro had 13. Michaela Donnelly also had 13. Emil Goodchild finished with 10. As the final bell whistles, and it's an 88-69 win for the Logan Thunder over the Mackay Meteorettes. For Logan, they shot 50, they wound up shooting 50% from the field, 57 from two, only 20% from three. So if you had to knock them on that, they probably didn't shoot as well from three as they would have hoped. Yeah, no doubt. And when we spoke during the broadcast about Logan controlling the backboard and rebounding the ball really, really well, and, and they were just impressive up and down the court tonight. Looked really good in transition, but their half court game looked pretty solid as well. Just and an impressive performance, no doubt. They were 11 of 13 from the free throw line too, so capitalized on those opportunities. For Makai leading the way, Tammy Willie, 26 points and five rebounds. Also in double figures was Michaela Cox with 11. Jackie Zelenka had 10. Uh, and then you see Shivana Palvas with nine, Jillian Houghton finished with five, but they only shot 39% from the field, 46% from two, only 13% from three. Uh, they scored 32 points in the paint as opposed to Logan's 42. So not the performance Makai wanted, 
but a great job by Logan getting the win in front of their home fans. No doubt about it. And looking forward to the men's game coming up as well, which will be equally as impressive, if not even a bit better. Yeah, well, that's going to wrap it up for us here. So we want to just take the time to thank Chris Sieber on the camera. I got to thank Regan Bacon Baker on the production panel for us. Dan George on the commentary with myself, John Guarna, and also want to give a shout out to James Bowman from Australian Sports Network down in Sydney for doing all of our graphics. And guys, if you can, make sure you give Live Sport Australia and Nothing But Net Media a like on Facebook. And make sure you vote for John, uh, excuse me, James Bowman and Australian Sports Network on the streaming awards also. Uh, and next week we will be live from you, from the Karina as Brisbane Sparns host, the Sunshine Coast Phoenix, the women's tip at one, the men tip at three. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to another QBL Game of the Week brought to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.